Hello. Hi guys. I'm Jade. And I'm Kiwekani. Welcome back to Asclepium. Uh, so today we have another video for you guys in the mini series of applying to the University of Cambridge to study medicine. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about the entrance exams for medicine. We're talking about both the UK cat and the BMAT. Yeah. Um, and obviously you don't need both for Cambridge, you just need the BMAT. Mm. So, but we're just going to discuss both, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously there is a lot of information on the um, internet about these, like the official websites, but we just kind of wanted to condense it down, put it into one video, yeah. a bit about each. You will still need to look into it, but you know, just bit of help in hand and also we do talk a bit about the SEQ which is the short answer questionnaire yeah um that you have to do for Cambridge this is in addition to UCAS application entrance exam you then do this before your interview yeah. so let's get started uh, so with the BMAT Cambridge University uses the BMAT mm -hmm. it doesn't use UK card as we've said uh, just a few logistical things about the BMAT um, obviously this this exam you do it after you've already applied so that's one thing to bear in mind mm -hmm. uh, so it will be this year 2017 it will be on the 2nd of november mm -hmm. you get the results on the 24th um, and you have to pay to do this examination mm -hmm. uh, but there are ways to get reimbursed you can check on the bmat website and also via your school mm -hmm. because some schools also do that yeah so the bmat is in three sections the first section being aptitude and skill you get 60 minutes for that the next section you get 30 minutes and it's uh, scientific knowledge and skill and then the last section you also get 30 minutes and it's writing test so you have to write like an essay so next in terms of resources and how to best um, prepare for the BMAT we both use similar resources yeah. um, when we've discussed it so I think main resources we used were the 400 BMAT question book it's like yeah. a greeny bluey kind of colour yeah. <laughs> um, that book we used the official BMAT book that the I think it's Cambridge assessment, potentially, yeah, they do it. Yeah. Um, the official book. So those were the main books I used. Mm -hmm. um, online with the official website, you can, there's a, one or two practice tests there. Yeah, um, those are very useful. Yeah, online tests that you can practice with. And also, when we were applying, Medify um, only provided resources for preparation for the UK CAT. But I think they were starting to branch out into maybe doing the BMAP, so mm -hmm. definitely look into um, Medify. Yeah. As I remember, you did have to pay like a small fee to have access to it, mm -hmm. but as we'll talk more about it in the UK cat, like it was really useful. So yeah, if they do it now, definitely have a look. Yeah. And I think another like bit of advice I would give is that for the um writing test, obviously when we did it, it was like thirty minutes for like one side of A four, and you mm -hmm. couldn't go over that. And obviously, it's quite subjective in terms of like, do you think you've done the essay like mini yeah. essay well? So one thing I would suggest is maybe like doing a couple of practice ones where like you time yourself in thirty minutes doing it. Yeah. And then hand it into like maybe the English teacher or someone like speak to your school or college, see if anyone would be interested in having a look for you, giving you their thoughts and just explain the nature of what you're trying to yeah. do. Like, because otherwise they're like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that could be a good way to try and Revise, practice, yeah. you know, to practice that bit. Because the rest of it is like core stuff and yeah. then science and math. So yeah. that's one bit where if you've done science solidly for a couple of years, you might need a bit more. Yeah. I mean, uh, with the scientific section, I know some people worry that the don't do physics or they haven't done physics in a while yeah. because it does have some physics component to it. But I would just say flip through your GCSE, like any GCSE yeah. like revision guides about physics, yeah, uh, things like that, and you should be fine. I, th I don't think it tests up to A-level standards of physics. No, I think, yeah, definitely. That is something else I did is that the revision guides I'd used at GCSE, I literally had a quick flick through them, yeah. like core things Stuff, that yeah. they could, you know, based on the practice papers that they give you, mm. what is the type of thing exactly. they're going for. Like definitely yeah. look at their official papers because that is really representative of yeah. what you're going to do but they don't give very much yeah. um to practice with so that's the problem that's why you have to yeah. look out <laughs> yeah but if you're doing sciences at a level or as level then you should be fine yeah I think. definitely so that was just a quick summary about bmat uh, if you have any further questions send them to us so we're going to move on to the to talking about uk cat yep so with the uk cat a lot more universities use it uh but cambridge doesn't i'm afraid and obviously when you're applying to medicine you have four choices so you might end up having to do both the UK CAT and the BMAT yeah. or some people do those two exams and also apply to universities that don't use any yeah. entrance exam so that's another choice. Yeah. So a bit more about the UK CAT now. So for this exam, uh, for 2017 it was run from the 3rd of July and it's going on until the 3rd of October and there was a slight price increase when you get to September so bear that in mind if that is going to affect it mm -hmm. but once again 
you can look into whether you can get reimbursed via the website and or your school or college. So definitely worth looking into. Mm. And the um, exam itself is sat at like an external site. So if you've done your theory test for your driving, it'll be like somewhere similar, if yeah. not the same place. Exactly. Um, and I think the bonus for doing this exam is that you get your results immediately after you've finished. Mm. Uh, so there's no wondering about how it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the exam itself is 120 minutes mm. and there are five sections. So there is the verbal reasoning, um, decision, quantitative, um, abstract and situational judgment. And there's different numbers of questions and time allocated yeah. to each of those sections. So definitely check that like information out. Uh, but yeah, so that's the main format of the exam. Mm -hmm. So just in, in terms of resources that we used when we took this exam, the UK card. Uh, we use the 600 UK card uh, yeah. book, which has got a greeny, sort of bluey color. Yeah, it's more blue than the BMAT one. Yeah. It's the way I have to And we also used Medify. Medify was really incredibly mm -hmm. useful. Yeah. They had a lot of questions you could practice with, and yeah. they would tell you the right answers and why they were the right answers. Yeah. So I highly recommend Medify. Yeah. Um, I think there was possibly two official, one or two official ones on the website as well when we did it. Oh, yeah, there were. Um, and that's you sort of, I think, I could be wrong, mm. because you never know what your score's actually going to be like when you practice them, which is the really yeah. annoying bit. So I think when you did the official one on the website, it possibly gave you an algorithm to work out your score, or yeah. it gave you a score, yeah. um, which I vaguely yeah. remember. <laughs> um, really and I think for the UK cat, um, my average was 660. I mean, I bombed the UK card. <laughs> My average was 610. Uh, I mean, yeah, it wasn't great, but... No, but I think the thing to bear in mind is, like, obviously, with the UK cat, like, I applied to three UK cat universities and one BMAT. Mm -hmm. And, obviously, you can have your score before you're applying. So, yeah, you can so definitely... Yeah. It's the same as in using your grades. Do you not use your UK cat? Like, yeah. the only thing I would say is that, like, some universities are more, like, heavily influenced by it because they need to get yeah. thousands of applications they yeah. need to have a way to stratify unfortunately it is an exam yeah like this way it is what happens on the day sometimes is yeah what determines it i mean one uh, university that is notorious for uk card is kings so mm -hmm. if your uk card is really really good and you think of kings then go for it yeah but if it's i was thinking of kings uh college, <laughs> kings college london but with my 610 i had to like just forget yeah. that because it wasn't going to play to my strengths yeah um, um, similarly, I wanted, I did apply to Newcastle and they were always like, at the time, quite high on ranking the UK cat. Like mm. they did want, like, there was always rumours of the score and it was always 700 plus. Yeah. So I was good when I got a 660, yeah. but I got an interview, like I was later in the cycle. So maybe they do look at interview, like the candidates they've had and so on. Mm. But I did still get an interview, you know, like yeah. it's not the end of the world. And I think obviously be strategic where you're applying with the score. Yeah. But also, still apply where you want to because, like, I applied to Newcastle just being like, I always wanted to apply to Newcastle. Yeah. And, you know, I did actually get the interview. And I think as well, it obviously varies depending on the year. So, that not that one year is going to be harder than another. Yeah. But if there is, like, say, a 40 point average lower than the year before, then still go for it. Like, yeah, you, you never exactly. know until you've applied as exactly. to what the cutoff is going to be for that year. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can be brave, but also play safe at the same time. Yeah. If you're going to have a really brave one, have a safe one yeah, as well. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, in terms of application, I applied to one BMAT, two UK CAT, and one nothing. Okay. Uh, so, Cambridge, Leicester, um, Leeds, and Liverpool. Yeah. When so, I applied Liverpool, didn't use any entrance exam, so... Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, so mine was Cambridge for the BMAT, Newcastle, Edinburgh, and Leeds as well. Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, it varies, you know. Yeah. Like, I think that's the difference. Obviously, you kick out, you will have your result before. So, if you're like, oh, I really want to apply all these ones that use the BMAT, keep in the back of your mind that... Not that anything bad should happen, but in case you don't get the yeah. score that you're hoping for, I can't remember my BMAT score now. It yeah. is four or five years since I sat it. Mm. Um, but yeah, that is one thing to bear in mind. Yeah. So now we're just going to touch on the SAQ. So it's a supplementary questionnaire you have to do for Cambridge once you've sent your main application via UCAS. Um, so with this one, you essentially, Cambridge essentially gets more of your details, mm -hmm. like personal details, and you also have to write like a short summary about yourself so i think i just took it as a 
second way to sort of sell myself and mm-hmm. maybe include things that I could include in my business name. Yeah, definitely. To make myself stand out. Uh, I know that when we were, we were applying, some of the students like that I knew sort of stressed about that. So we just wanted to like tell you guys a bit more about it. Yeah. But I don't think it's something to stress over. No. And I think another thing is they do give you a chance to give topics you would be happy to talk about yeah. in your interview. And I don't think I would actually question on any of mine, but I do think in addition to reading your personal statement and knowing what you said and what you're yeah. interested in and so on, which should be what you, you are interested yeah. in, also remember what you've put on here because if you've given another topic exactly. where you're like, oh, I can talk about this, and then you get there and you're like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember so. mentioning about like isomers and um, thalidomide, so I was asked about that. Oh, in okay. Interview. So, yeah, if you write anything down, make sure you know it inside out. Yeah. Um, and also, just a tip that when you submit your SAQ, you also ask to submit a picture of yourself, like a, a portrait picture. Mm-hmm. That picture will follow you for the rest of your time in Cambridge. Yeah. That's something we didn't know. And I like I submitted mine last minute, the last day we could up like the deadline and that picture was not great. And I have my I have it on my ID like now and it's followed me everywhere. You were more prepared. I was a bit more strategic. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know it would follow me, but I was like, I was, I was a bit lived, more prepared. <laughs> I leave a lot of things last minute. So yeah, just tip. Yep. <laughs> okay, so I feel like we've kind of discussed everything we were hoping to do today about yeah. BMAT, UK CAT, <laughs> that's it. BMAT, UK CAT, and also the SAQ. Mm-hmm. So obviously this is just a brief overview, trying to put yeah. some more of the information together. Whether you're applying now or interested in applying, this could help you out. Yeah. Um, so if you have any questions, just let us know down below or on the social medias. Yeah. And <laughs> um, we hope you enjoyed the video today and make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe for more content and exactly. hopefully see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye-bye.